All right. Let me just make sure. That, all right. How are we doing, everybody? It's your boy Kyle back with another uh, KML interview. Today we have a very special guest, my coach, former L former MLB player and current MLB scout Willie Frazier. It's great to have you on with us today. Kyle, thanks for having me, man. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, all right, so let's dig right into it. So take me back to like high school, what baseball was like, uh, what recruiting was like, how you were as a player. Okay. Um... Baseball's, I mean, for me, baseball's baseball, right? So um, we just didn't have this this specific coaching like you guys have now. It wasn't offered. We didn't have video. We didn't have any of that. I mean, video was not unheard of. Um, one coach on your on your team, that was it. Um, on our summer league, American Legion team, we had three coaches, but no real pitching guys. They were just coaches. Um, you know. Our team was pretty, my high school team was really close. We had, I think we had two seniors and everybody else were juniors. So my, on my varsity team. So we were really, we came up together. We were close. We had a good team, but the game was played the same. I mean, look, it was high school. So everybody was just trying to go out and win, right? So you try to be at your best all the time. And that yeah. was, uh, you know, and some days it worked and some days it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. Now, recruiting is different, way different now. Like recruiting guys for you, um, now that I've seen this, it's um, it's a business now recruited, to get recruited and everything else. I mean, for us, you get a letter. I get a letter in the mail saying that they like the school liked me and um, they were interested. And they would call me eventually or I would call them if I was interested or write a letter back to them. Um Go, you you could visit up to five schools. So you'd go and look at your five schools if that's what you wanted to do and then made your decision from there. Yeah. You know, um, I had some choices to go to Texas or to New Mexico, down to Florida, but I don't think I was ready myself. I wasn't I wasn't ready to be that far away. I wanted to be away, but I didn't want to be that far away. Um I also the schools, some of the schools, I mean James Madison, Miami, freaking Texas Tech, New Mexico, schools like that were big schools. Yeah. And so I'm not sure I wasn't, I, I was coming from a big high school and I wasn't sure I wanted to go right back to that whole deal where I was just kind of just another guy. I yeah. had a chance to be better with a smaller school. Mm -hmm. Now, so, as like a player in high school, like in the recruiting process, when did you get? Like really good in high school, like my my junior year, I was I think I was like uh, eight and two, and we won ten games. So, um, I threw hard, not hard, hard, but I threw hard for that time. Um, and and I was known just for that. I didn't have anything else, but I, you know, I had gone to tryouts where um, you guys would guess call them showcases, but we would go to Yankee Stadium. Um, Shea Stadium, and we'd go down. They'd they'd invite you to go down there and go to a tryout. So you were there for like five hours, mm -hmm. four or five hours, and you would they would freaking hit and field, and then you would play pitchers would warm up and play a game. Yeah. Um. So I did that. There was no going to colleges and doing that though. That was just in pro ball. Um. You know, and then there would always be like the Yankees, the Mets, Phillies, and then another like MLB tryout where there was other teams there, like, you know, Cincinnati or Kansas city or whoever in there. Um, <clears throat> but in terms of colleges, we had nothing like PBR or perfect. And there was none of that. You played high school baseball, you played American Legion, and then you played football after that was done. There was no fall ball. There was none of that. We didn't have any of that. Mm -hmm. So it was just different. You played the sport that was in. Mm -hmm. we didn't like you guys are doing stuff in december yeah i didn't pick up a baseball i don't think until march in high school because there wasn't anywhere to do it I mean, yeah. we weren't going inside to practice that was out when doing that and we had enough gym space to do it. we just didn't do it um i think we might have been in the gym one time before we went outside we were outside freezing but we yeah. were outside so that was like a like helped you a lot not picking up the ball 
I don't know if it helped or, it, it, you know, because I felt like I got a lot better when I went to college. Um, mm -hmm. And that was more, you're, you're, I mean, as soon as we could practice, we're practicing. So let's say it was the first day back when we got back into school, like the 15th or the 12th or whatever it was in, in yeah. January, we were practicing, you know, and we practiced every day or five days a week. We could. Um, Saturday, there was an all day event. You know, we'd get there at eight in the morning and then we would be there until five, mm -hmm. all inside. So, now, now, what school did you end up committing to? Or... So, I went to Concordia College in Bronxville, mm -hmm. um, small school, really small school. My graduating class was almost a thousand at NFA. And my whole college was 450 students. Wow. Yeah. Um, we had out of that. My when I got there as a freshman, the, the class after me, we had seven guys drafted in those three classes. Jeez. From that little school. So and so I mean it was just like didn't know anybody. Everybody I went to school down there with was basically from the Bronx or somewhere over there, just a different mindset than what we have here. Yeah. Like, you know, we're ready to, they were they were ready to fight. They're ready to do whatever the hell they had to do to win the game. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. um the consequences they were just going to do whatever they had to do and I, that really helped me a lot i think looking back um because you had to, you had to change your thought process to all along you know you get out on the mound and you got guys ready to fight the other team and you're like out there you're like what the hell are we doing but after a little bit you're like yeah all right let's do this so it gave you a little bit of an edge i felt like that you know that i needed yeah it brought fear like you would they feared you guys. Instead. Well, I don't know if they feared us, but I know that they weren't happy when we fought them. And we fought quite a few teams. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, now, how did you do in college? Like, how was... How college, did... I did I, I, I did well in college. Um, my freshman year, I was okay. I mean, like, I didn't just stack up wins or something like that, but I pitched well. I mean... Um, I don't think my ERA was over two five any one year I was there. Mm -hmm. um, I led. I was second in the nation in ERA in um, in my sophomore year. Yeah, and um, I pitched something like I want to say something like sixty four innings. And I gave up eight runs. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just like it was just stupid. It was, it was great. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have to even think. Everything was autopilot. It was just locked in. Yeah. Um, you know, junior year was a little harder. Um, Took a few more hits in junior year than I did my, but but I kind of established myself my my sophomore year mm -hmm. as you know where I was going to go. I started talking to major league teams. Yeah. Didn't get talk. I spoke to a few teams when I was out of high school, and then after my sophomore year, I had a lot of teams I was talking to at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so when that year got over and I played in summer, um, I played well in the summer. I pitched in. Um, pitched in Teaneck and I played in an all-star game in Philadelphia against Cape Cod and pitched well there. And, um, and then I just had scouts calling me or coming, you know, wanting to come to the house and sit down and talk and tell them why they were going to take me. Like I had any say, and I didn't have any say whether they were going to take me or not. I mean, they just told me they wanted me. I was like, all yeah. right, you know. Um, so you said you played against, Cape Cod or you were yeah yeah so I was playing at the um I was in the ACBL so we were at the Atlantic Coast Conference baseball so okay. we played against the Cape Cod All-Stars yeah I still have a program from that we're, like the names of it on the program oh wow that's pretty crazy yeah I'll bring, I'll bring it in I'll bring it in this weekend that's that's crazy yeah that's the biggest ba summer baseball in the whole nation yeah yeah, when I was when I was coming when I was in high school or college, I mean, it was Cape Cod, and then there was a there was an Alaska league. It was a league in Alaska, mm -hmm. so a lot of the West Coast kids went to the Alaska league. And yeah. the East Coast kids in the Cape the Midwest, they just kind of split them up. So, but I didn't get to go there. But well, my school was a Division two. Yeah, my college. Yeah. So did you end up getting like a full ride from there? Your mm -hmm. school. Yeah, yeah, all they could give me, everything but doing a book in the dorm. So uh -huh. now you you have the MLB scouts sitting down. Uh what was the main thing they said to you? Like 
I know you said they want you, but like, what did they have to offer? Like, no, it wasn't. It was almost like they wanted to tell me how great their team was and find out if I was willing to sign because I would have another year of eligibility, right? So I could always bail and go back to school, which yeah. I had no intentions of doing. But, um, but yeah, so I, I, I was like the, I remember sitting with the Pirates. I, I want to say the Pirates picked picked sixth maybe or fourth or sixth, one of the two, because they took Bonds with that pick. Oh. Um, yeah. And I talked to the Reds and they took Barry Larkin with that pick. Um, so one of them was four, one of them was six. Um, but yeah, I talked to a lot of teams. I mean, a lot of teams. And um, I really didn't talk to the Angels, which was funny. Uh -huh. um, I talked to them. My last game I pitched in college, I was in, um, we were in um, the regionals, mm -hmm. in NAI regionals we were playing. And we were in Pennsylvania somewhere, a little place in Pennsylvania. And I went out and we pitched. I pitched against Point Park, who was the name of the team. And the game went 12 innings. And I pitched all 12 and freaking we won, right? Five to three or whatever it was. And this guy comes up to me. It was an angel scout. First mm -hmm. time I had seen him. And they were like, like we had, our ballpark was like a, crappy high school ballpark like bad uh -huh. small little backdrop we had a hill in right field with a rock in it i mean it was crazy right but there would be scouts because the guy that got drafted the year before me um when he was a junior he got drafted like in the fourth round by the blue jays well we would pitch in a double header he would start the first and i would start the second yeah. there might be 40 scouts behind the freaking backstop and that backstop was a small little backstop and all you see is radar guns just held up above the screen. Yeah. You know, and that's all there was. They couldn't even see their face because there was a, a backdrop behind it. Yeah. But they, just, they would just stand there. So, but when the Angels guy came up to me, he asked me who my favorite pitcher was at the time. I just, I remember this. I don't know why, but I do. And, um, and I, at the time, I like uh, Gooden was just starting to freaking come on the scene. So, of course, I liked him. And um, then he asked me about Nolan Ryan because Nolan Ryan kind of established himself with the Angels. Yeah. And um, I said, yeah, well, yeah, of course I like Nolan Ryan. But that was the only conversation with them. Not again, not, and it was just like after a game for about three minutes. Mm -hmm. Draft comes up and it was no tra tracker. It was nothing like that. You didn't know who was picking where. You just got a phone call. Yeah. So I'm just sitting in my house with my family and Boom, phone rings. It's the Angels, and it took me 15th in the country. So pretty cool. Amazing. Yeah, yeah it really was amazing. What were you awesome. uh, feeling like getting that call? Like, what were your emotions like? So it was funny because I didn't – because I really didn't know who it was going to be, what team it was going to be, because I had talked to so many of them, and nobody was like – we're you know, some of the scouts, like, at four and six would say, oh, we're taking you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Barry Bonds and Barry Larkin. I think you take those guys first, which is a good pick. But um, you know what? So I had so many teams that I spoke to that I really didn't know. I knew that I knew that the Yankees weren't in. Yeah. I knew that. And then the Mets I had spoken to a little bit. Neither one of the real New York teams were on me, but all these other teams I had spoken to, and I'm like, I don't know. So it was a shock when the Angels called me, to be honest with you. Yeah. But it was a good shock. I didn't care who it was at that yeah. point. Do you uh do you remember what you did that night, like in celebrating or anything? No, I I can't tell you that. I, I mean, I hung out with my family. I know, um, and my wife was my girlfriend at the time, so she was over, and we, you know, and we all hung out and didn't go too crazy. Um, then I then then when I got as soon as I got my bonus check, we got in, it took a while to get negotiated the whole thing. It was yeah. like it didn't take that long, but it felt like it took like for weeks because I hadn't played you know, for a little bit when I got drafted. So I got done with college and was like, I don't know, I'm not going to play because the draft is like, I don't know, the 5th or 6th of June at that time. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for the draft. So I'm just playing catch. Now all of a sudden I get drafted and it's like, mm, negotiations. So negotiations took like six days, which was like forever. But Walt Weiss, who was a shortstop um, from North Carolina, BJ Surhoff was the first pick of the country. He was from Rye, New York, but he went to North Carolina. Oh, and then Walt Weiss was the 11th pick 
by um by the A's, he he went to, he grew up in Suffern. Oh wow. And then I was the 15th pick from Newburgh. So we had three of us from New York in the first 15 picks. And I knew Walt's coach well. So I would talk to Walt a little bit. And and I wasn't I knew I wasn't gonna sign until he signed. Yeah. So as soon as BJ signed and then the top four guys or five guys signed, then like Incavilia was like eight, but he didn't want to go to Montreal home. That's who he was drafted by. So he kind of waited and waited and waited until they would trade him. And they traded him to Texas. So, but um as soon as as soon as um Walt was signed, he let me know that he agreed. I knew I was gonna agree because it was just gonna trickle down and take thousand or two thousand off and the time it got to me, that was gonna be the number. And I think my number was ninety seven or ninety eight thousand dollars. Yeah. The now, the country. <laughs> now, what does that accumulate now to like a couple well, of years, right? I think that the last the time I looked, the draft, um, last year's draft, I think the fifteenth picks got something like almost four million. Wow. <laughs> that must have felt really good back like <laughs> well, back then it was. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was great. You know, I was like loaded. Did you uh, did you buy anything with that first check? I did. did. You- I did. I bought a, I bought a, um, I bought a BMW, a three series BMW. And, um, and in fact, one of my best friends, his dad was a dealer, was worked at the dealership. Yeah. So I set it up where I had a, I had an Audi that was just not in good shape, not in good shape. So he said, and if it would just stall and once it stalled, it would take forever to start again. Yeah. So he said, all right. So we had it all worked out. I think I paid something like 30 grand for the 25 or 30 grand for the car. And he said, all right, bring me Audi. Just pull it in the garage. I'll open the door, pull it in the bay, and then forget it. I said, done. And I pulled it in, dropped it off, and walked in and got in a new car. Wow. And uh, he said the next, the next day, the guys were like, what the hell is this? What are we going to do with this? He goes, I don't know. It was running when he brought it in. I don't know what we're going <laughs> to But it was, it was awesome. It was, it was great. It was really good. I had that car for a long time, too. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, do you buy anything else? Like a big, nothing big. What was I going to buy? That was as big as I could buy. I know. I I didn't know if you like bought your parents. I tried to keep, I tried to keep half of the money in because I got taxed on, you know? Yeah. So So what did you get? Like 48? Yeah. Yep. Just about. Yep. So put the rest in fucking whatever. I don't know what I put it in. I put it in something and, um, no, didn't even think about it. Whatever happened, happened at that point. Yeah. But I still had to go and live. And I was, you know, because we got paid. When I went, I went to, I went to Quad Cities, Iowa. First, I went to California. I was out there for a couple of days. Was um, it rookie ball? Or? For, it was for mini camp. We had all, all the draft guys were there for mini camp. So mm-hmm. basically what happened is they took, you could pick as many as you wanted at that point, that year. So there was only, number one, there was only 26 teams. There wasn't 30 teams. Right. And you could draft as many as you wanted. As right. long as other people were drafting, you could keep drafting. So they could draft 50 people. You know, I don't even know how many we drafted, but we had a lot of kids. And so um they had they had enough guys to make the rookie ball team. And then they took about I think they took six of us or five of us and moved them, move us to A ball. So I went right to A ball. Um and I met the team in Quad Cities. Oh, me and wow. me and three other guys. Yeah. So the other the other we had two first round picks. Me and the next pick was 18th. So both of us were pitchers. So we both went to Quad Cities. And then there was another out infield outfielder from Temple that went as well with us. Um and then freaking those guys were already there for half a year. They were the same age as we were, but they were yeah. just there for half a year. We just kind of mixed right in. You know, still still friends with like four of those guys to this day. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that are become that are really good friends of mine. So, but um, you know, it's just it's different because then it becomes your job. When you're in college, it's not your job. You just yeah. play base. But then when you go to play pro ball, that's all you do. That's your job. So yeah. now you don't have to worry about anything else. You're just playing. Like, okay, I mean, we stayed at this crappy hotel. In the Quad Cities, I think it cost us. I think it was four bucks a day, something like that. But we only made seven hundred a month, so 
So, I mean, and then, we, you know, you're going to lose about, I don't know, we would lose 200 in taxes or something like that. So we're making $500, you know, and I'm staying in a stupid hotel. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we went on the road, the team would, but we would, everybody was in the same boat. So it didn't matter. Like we would have, um, we would go on the road and our road trip would be, somebody had to go to the store and get bread, bologna and cheese. Wow. So, we, and we had a, and we had a freaking hot plate that we would plug in and that would be what we would eat. Yeah. And we'd stop and, you know, of course we'd stop and get McDonald's or whatever the hell else. It was nobody, nobody cared. It was like, we got like $5 a day for meal money. Uh -huh. So it was like, somebody's got to save some for beer. I mean, somebody's got to save some for free food. <laughs> and that's what we did. And I mean, you know, we would come after games and everybody would be in one room and there'd be like two cases of beer and freaking bologna and cheese sandwiches on the on the grill that's, that's funny yeah yeah it was, was um you learned a lot though because we were with so many guys from different places right mm -hmm. so coming from new york all of a sudden one of my best friends to this day still brian harvey he is from north carolina and i mean he had one stoplight in his hometown and that was like a festival when they got that stoplight he said it was like big shit when he got the stoplight i'm like oh yeah he goes oh yeah pumpkin pumpkin he said it's called Pumpkin Center. Pumpkin Center. Pumpkin Center. I go, Harv, what the? He goes, yeah, we got a stoplight a couple of years ago. And it was nice. Said, sure. That's but right. um, he, uh, you know, just listening to these guys and the way they, they, they attack life and attack the game and whatever. I mean, it was just, you know, you get a guy from California, you get a guy from North Carolina, you get a guy from Florida, Texas. They're just, it's just a different mindset, just the way they are. They all want to win. Don't get me wrong. It's just a different way they do shit. Now, with like playing in the minors in, uh, you said low A or high A? Low, I started in low A. All right. Yeah, low A. Uh, what do you think makes and breaks these players from, uh, you know, getting getting caught, like, losing yeah. contract or... I think, I think there it's two, there's, you know, there's a couple of reasons. I think the one, the biggest is the the inability to be able to adjust. They can't make adjustments quick enough or they, they can't make adjustments at all. Like they'll get stuck in that one one way and that's it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like we talk about sometimes there's more than one way to do things. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like by the book, but there's a couple things in a, in like in a swing or in, in a delivery that you have to get to those spots. Yeah. In order for, to have success, right? So guys can't, make those adjustments quick enough so they just kind of get stuck where they are and they'll play to their ability sometimes i mean yeah you're going to get guys that can play above but not many you know the the best the best guys are better than most guys mm -hmm. um and then mentally it's a drain it'll beat these kids up i mean you know you you freaking you go out and you get your ass kicked a couple times and now you're like doubting yourself and as soon as that happens you're not going to do well. You can't compete with guys that are confident. You already yeah. lost the battle. That's right. Like I was told by one of my managers when the big leagues, I hung my head after an outing in, in Cleveland. And I was having like a pity party because I felt bad that I kind of shit the bed. And I'm just sitting on the bench and, and he comes over and he goes, you know, I'm going to just tell you this. I'm thinking, um, I know as a hitter and as a player, um, when we saw a pitcher on the mound that had no confidence or, or was unsure, that was just like throwing chum in the water for the sharks. Yeah. It's because we couldn't wait to go up and face him because he didn't, he wasn't confident in anything he was doing. So we just wait for him to make a mistake because it was going to happen type mm -hmm. of thing, you know? So, so, and I think that's what happens is self doubt comes in. And then that once that doubt hits, if you can't push through it, that's why they, you know, they often say your memory's got to be short one way or the other, good or bad. Can't mm -hmm. get too high. Can't get too low. You kind of have to find that happy medium if you can. Yeah. Now, uh, this uh, Zoom call says I only have 10 more minutes left. I'm okay. Great. So let's uh, jump into a little bit of sure. majors, uh, how quick you got there and uh, your experience. Yeah. So I was, I was fortunate. I went. I got drafted in 85, played in Quad Cities. Then the next year I went to high A ball. I played like four months there. 
um, got called up to triple a for the, for August, uh, pitched well there. And then I was in the big leagues. So my first full year, I went to the big league. Wow. Um, very yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, um, so when 86, we went to the playoffs, we got beat by the Red Sox who then later got beat by the Mets in the 86 series. So we got beat, um, by a home run. We, you know, we were up, we were up three games to one and in our, in our place and we're up by a run and freaking ninth inning, two outs, two strikes guy hits a stolen home run to tie the game or to go ahead. We tied the game back up. I'm sorry. You had a two run home. We tied the game back up in the bottom of the ninth. had a chance to win it. And we popped up in the infield and kind of, and didn't happen. Yeah. And we went to Boston, got beat the next two games, but I just, I didn't pitch in that. I just pitched one game, which yeah. is in um, September, which was cool. I pitched in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, the stadium sat 104,000. It was a football stadium that they played wow. baseball in too. 104,000. There was 5,000 people there. So I could hear them talking in the stands, like you and I are talking right now. Yeah, I could hear them having conversations because it was just so big and loud. Mm-hmm. You know, like they were talking about lunch, and I'm on the mound trying to get people out for the first time ever in big leagues. <laughs> um, but I wound up pitching four and a third, four and two thirds. We wound up winning in 14 innings, but. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I think I gave up four runs, but it was amazing. I mean, you just, you know, you know, you're just like, you're out there. And you're in the moment. Like, yeah. It's just like you're, you're numb to everything. You don't, you've zoned like tunnel vision like crazy for the minute, right? You first get out there, you're like, holy shit, I'm here. You know, and you're like facing, and they're, I remember somebody putting something on the board. Their team batting average was like 285. Yeah. For a team. Yeah. So they had some boys that could hit. And yeah. It was like, but my advantage was they didn't know who I was. So, you know, it was their first time seeing me. Mm-hmm. So usually pitchers have a little bit of an advantage. Apparently I didn't have that much of an advantage because they had four runs. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so the next team, next year I went into camp and, um, and I had to make the team, you know, because there was no guarantees at that point. Yeah. And, um, went into camp and pitched really well, made the team out of the bullpen, um, pitched out of the bullpen for like a month. And then one of the starters got hurt. Um, they put me in the rotation and wound up going 10 and 10 that year. Had like a three ERA, three, six or something. Um, you know, and I was kind of felt like I was there. Yeah. You know, trying to establish myself a little bit. Next year was rough, 88, my second year in the big leagues. I just got killed for a little bit. Just couldn't figure it out. I mean, it was like we were not good, and I was not good. Um, I think at one point around the All Star break, I had something almost like a seven ERA, just like brutal. Um, pitched in some games where I felt like we had guys a starter get hurt, and I was going to pitch the next day instead of jamming somebody in there. I would take that start. So I was pitching short a couple different times. Yeah, and that didn't help me at all because I needed the bullpen. But I really couldn't use. I couldn't throw a bullpen because they needed me to pitch mm-hmm. so um i wasn't getting any work so finally after that uh, it was against cleveland and i got booed off the field in anaheim and bad feeling just a bad feeling like just i was pissed yeah. Yeah. but um you know and then my, my pitching coach was mad he was really good i'm still good friends with him. and he's like it's not you're not doing that anymore we're not doing any more skips nothing you're not doing that you're gonna get your bullpens and 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 I think the turning point for me, Chili Davis came up to me. He was playing right field and he said, um, Frazier, you either got to work faster or throw more strikes. I said, um, <clears throat> huh? He goes, faster or more strikes, you're killing us in the field. You're working slow and you're not throwing enough strikes. I said, all right. I said, well, I'm not sure I can throw the strikes, but I know I can work faster. So I worked faster and I got hot. I won like seven out of eight games. Where I was just I was going out there and freaking dealing and it was just stupid. It was unbelievable. But I kept the hitters edgy. They were freaking unsure because I tried. Then it was a game in my head. How can I make them call time? Yeah. If I could get them to do that, then it was like I'm, I'm winning. So, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. So I wound up going 12 and 13, five ERA. But I mean, at at one point I was, I think I had 11 losses and I and I was like five and 11. Mm-hmm. And I was at 12 and 12 and I could have shut it down. And they asked me if I wanted to start the last game. And I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll go out there. I lost three to two. And so 
um, but yeah, I mean, it was, and then the next year we got like, um, we got two more starters, Bly Levin, we got, and we got, um, an Abbott came on the scene yeah, Tim Abbott, and then, um, one other guy. So they put me in the bullpen and then I kind of pretty much stayed in the bullpen the rest of the time I was in the big leagues. Mm-hmm. It's two years in the bullpen with the angels. And then they traded me to Toronto. I was miserable in Toronto. Good team. I just wasn't part of it. I didn't feel like I was a part of that team. It was like very clicky group, like different, you know, this group, this group, this group. And I didn't really fit in and too many of them. So I get, I get picked up off of waivers from St. to St. Louis, which was the greatest. Loved it. St. Louis was terrific. Ozzy Smith, you know, it just Pedro Guerrero, these guys that were just great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, went back to the Angels. The following year after the Angels, I stayed in the minor leagues the whole year. Um, then I went to the Tigers the next year. Again, 93, the whole year in the minor leagues. Um, 94, I signed with the Marlins. 95 with the Expos. Um, got half the year with the Expos in the big leagues. And then I got a chance to go to Japan. So I was all over that. And I went to Japan for three years and played there, which was great. You got mm-hmm. to play with each row and so Taguchi and Asagawa. So pretty cool. You did play in the Wow. Oh yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It was um it was it was definitely cool. Mm-hmm. Now there's two minutes left. I'm yeah. gonna talk after this thing runs out, but um yeah. what are some like lessons or things kids don't know that they're gonna go through during uh this game of baseball? I think that it's funny because there's kids that don't fail that often when they're younger, right? And and they and then when it starts to happen, they don't know how to handle that. They don't they don't accept that very well. And and I'm I don't think you need to accept it, but you have to understand it. You don't get better if you always win. It just doesn't happen. If you're always beating the other team, you're not getting better. You're just beating them. You will get better when you lose. You lose, now you have to freaking change something or adjust something or figure something else out, right? If you go out there and get your butt kicked and kids don't understand that, and that's how you get better for me. That's how you separate yourself. I'm yeah. taking that that beating I just took in that field, in that game. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? You know, so my bullpen, my bullpens were just that. What did I do right? Well, let's cement that and get that right again. And then what did I do wrong? Well, wh- why did it go wrong? What was the problems there? You know, and I didn't have, like I said, we didn't have access to video like you guys have it now. Yeah. So it was like feel, a lot of feel stuff that we had to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's all we knew. So it was fine. You know, if you guys just had that, you'd be fine. You just had, you would have to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, you just have the access to everything different, you know, better. Um, I also think you can get crazy with it. I think that comes there's a there's a line there. You go paralysis by analysis sometimes. Sometimes you just have to go out and do it. Yeah. You know you can't over you can't no one's gonna. I've said it to all you guys. No one's gonna be perfect. You're gonna have you're gonna leave come into the gym not perfect, and you're not leaving perfect either. Yeah. But it's how you can adjust those when it's not right. Can you feel that? Can you not feel that? Because yeah. you don't have access like that when it's going bad. You can't go and look at the video in between innings or, you know, in between at bats in high school. It's just not an option. So we need to feel that, you yeah. know. And so the, 